Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be taking a look at Netrunner version 19.08 which is based on Debian Buster, this is the long term support version of Netrunner. The other version is based on Arch or Manjaro which is rolling release. Now there used to be yet another version of Netrunner which was based on Ubuntu, although that split off and became Maui Linux or Maui OS and that back in 2017 they did a release and nothing became of it. So I'm presuming that distribution is either dormant or gone. I had a look at their forums and there was nothing there, it's just a bunch of advertising. So it appears to be the work they're doing is Netrunner, either the Debian or the Arch version. So what we have here is an overbloated KDE system with lots of applications, the Kvantum theming engine. Uh, yeah, do you really want bloated KDE systems? Although to be fair, I can't really think of any. But no, we do have a KDE system that is usable out of the box with a bit of theming on it. Let's take more of a look at it. So starting with the memory usage, that is just shy of 700 meg. A little bit more than the average KDE system. Actually, a good couple of hundred meg more than the average KDE system should be. We had Linux kernel 4.19, the Mesa graphics drivers 18.3.6, and as you can see from the LSB release, it is Netrunner version 19.08, codenamed Indigo. So they've gone for the more traditional desktop layout for the styling. There's a readme file left on the desktop, but the readme is actually a launcher to the Netrunner website. I suppose kind of like an app. And there's a few more of these in the system, which I'll come to later on in the video. So the Firefox extended support release browser has been customized slightly. So we've got a few bookmarks here to Netrunner and Netrunner forums and the opendesktop.org website, where you can get quite a range of additional styling and applications from. They've kept with a fairly traditional style desktop here, but we do have the dashboard for the application launcher. I'm quite a fan of the dashboard layout. That is yeah, the one I use all the time now in KDE. There's a couple of quick launchers to Dolphin and Firefox. I'm not sure what they've done with Dolphin here with the layout. Um, yeah, they, they've actually put the tabs in the middle. Uh, I don't understand that. Why, why, why are they put the tabs there? <laughs> Normally in Dolphin, the tabs are on the left-hand side. I don't like it. Oh, just close the whole of Dolphin. So I forget that dialog box is there. I normally have it uh, disabled on my systems. In terms of the theming, as I mentioned, they've got the Kvantum theming engine on here. They've got Kvantum Manager. That's for using some fairly complex SVG themes or scale effects graphics themes. You can customize it by adding your own files on here. Or going across the system settings, and going for the look and feel, you can add any additional themes from here. And doing a search for Kvantum, you'll soon see the list. Here are these uh, fancy transparent themings. This is all an optional thing to go for. I, I installed a couple of extra ones. But the default themes are these bottom six, of which four of them are Netrunner specific, Netrunner Blue, Desktop, Indigo and Black. The default Netrunner Indigo theme has this fancy colored mouse, this red mouse, which someone has forgotten to do the diagonal edges. <laughs> yeah, actually, why is that not working? It does there. And if you want to customize various components, you do have that ability in KDE. So you might want to change just one item in the theming and get some of these fancy transparency things. They've added a couple of additional cursor themes on here. So that's another one they've added. Reminds me of Windows, though. So. Oh, they got the diagonal cursor right on that one. I don't know. Why didn't they use that as default then if it's complete? I hate default themings in Linux distributions that are not complete. If you're going to set it as your default, make sure it's complete. It has a complete icon set for all pre installed applications and it has a complete icon set for all mouse cursors. It's just a simple requirement, otherwise, it just looks a mess. Various other customizations you can do in KDE, but I don't really want to cover that, so I'm sure I'll cover that enough in other videos. We can see the KDE Plasma version here, 5.14, that is old. The current version of KDE is 5.16. The long term support release of KDE is version 5.12, so I'm not sure what Debian are really doing here, messing around with uh, trying to keep an interim version running for the well, their entire length that uh, Debian Buster is going to be supported for, which is going to be a good couple of years or so, a good few years, isn't it? So they've got these web app type applications. 
A few things here, so HookTube, that's a lightweight alternative to YouTube. So I can just go and watch YouTube videos. Okay, so yeah, there's an app to look at YouTube instead of going to the actual YouTube website. Yeah, it doesn't even have to be YouTube. Come on, use BitChute or something. Open Desktop, Open Desktop I've seen as a link. we got Skype, Telegram and WhatsApp. But all these are just going straight to websites within the browser. But now the full range of applications and there's, uh, there's quite a few on here. It's got Steam. Graphics, you've got a couple of editors on here with GIMP and Krita. Internet, you've got the Firefox extended support release. KD Marble, this was mentioned to me recently as an alternative to Google Maps. So it uses OpenStreetMap for the mapping data and they've got a mobile app as well. Yeah, it looks a nice idea. So just show zooming in a bit. Um, I don't know what it is with OpenStreetMap. There are data's not coming in too quick for me. I remember their performance being a lot better than this. Multimedia, so you've got Audacious, G Music Browser, and your Rock for the music players. The SM Player for the media player. SM Player being a cute version of like MPV player. So that actually fits nicely in this desktop. Can't fault them there. Got a partial suite of LibreOffice. You can use the Yaquake terminal. They've gone for app images as one of these alternative package sources instead of using apps packages. It's a different way of running newer packages on your system and they have all dependencies included within one file. So that's what we look at Netrunner version 19.08. I'm not really sure I like all these KDE applications on here, but perhaps it is a convenience not having to mess around with codecs and additional drivers, especially on Debian. It was nice having the Phantom theming manager on here so I could experiment with some of the additional themes for the Plasma desktop. I can't really accept being stuck on an older version of the KDE Plasma desktop, considering that the Plasma desktop is one of the most rapidly developed desktops in Linux. I'd look, I would feel left behind looking at all the amazing new features in the Plasma desktop and then think, when is my system going to be upgraded? Oh, that's right, in, in a few years time when the next version of Debian Stable comes out. Yeah, I know that's a bit of an exaggeration, but you know, that's just kind of how I'd feel really. I suppose the other option is you use the Arch version, in which case you're going to be stuck right on the bleeding edge. So it's one extreme to the other. Yeah, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.